In our previous section, we've built a deep learning model based on convolutional neural networks to help detect the presence of malaria in blood cells. Nonetheless, in the real world, we are not always going to be using our models on a collab notebook like this. Hence, we need to be able to save this model so it could be used externally. In this section, we'll learn how to save and load a model and also do the same process with Google Drive. That is, we'll be able to save our model in our Google Drive and then later on when we want to use this model, we'll just load it from our Google Drive. That said, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss amazing Ooh, content like this. Pee -pee. We've built this very performant model, though we could improve on it. But then, once we close this, we do not save this model's current state. And so, if we have to come next time, the model will have randomly initialized weights, which will be different from the weights we've got now after training on this data set. Another issue is, in case we want to use this model in another scenario or in another environment, like say on a browser or on a mobile phone, we'll need to find a way to export this model from here. And so TensorFlow allows us to save our model. Now, we'll have to differentiate between a model's configuration and a model's weight. So, a model like this, let's suppose we have a model which is defined as such. We have the input which we pass into a conf layer, and then we have batch normalization, we have pooling for subsampling, and then we flatten, and after flattening, we pass to a dense layer and we have our output. So, suppose we have this small model. Now, all the parameters for the creation of this model are known as the model's configuration. In the model's configuration, we may have it that the model, for example, like in this case here, the model starts with a conf layer with six filters, kernel size three, batch norm, and all this. So these are our model's configurations. But this model's configurations are different from the model's weights. The model's weights are those filters we have, for example, in the case of the conf2d, so we have the model weights and the model's configuration. And upon summarizing the model, we see clearly here that we have this conf2d and then we have this number of parameters. And so whenever we want to sa save a model, we have to take into consideration this configuration and the weights because for this same configuration we could have different weights and so there are actually two main options the first option is to save the full model that is to save the model configuration and the model weights another option will be to save only the model weights so we could save only the model weights now this option is used when for example we don't want to or we don't even know this model configuration up front so um we have used this here we've defined the models configuration we've trained it we've got a new weights and this is the current model state but if we take this to another environment where we don't have this configuration then if we've saved this model's configuration and weights all we need to do is just to load this configuration and weights which have been packaged as the full model. Now in another case where we are able to get the configuration and all we need is just the weights, then we'll just uh, save the weights and then reload these weights since we already have the configuration. Either ways, we'll always need the configuration and the weights. Nonetheless, it's important to note that the most important part of this is actually the weights since working with a randomized or randomly initialized weights after we've trained our model isn't very useful and sometimes we may take 
many days to train this model so imagine you've trained your model for like 10 days and then you want to reuse that model and the weights have been randomly initialized you find that those 10 days have been wasted both time wise and monetary wise so you have to ensure that you save your weights properly such that you could reuse them and then the great thing with tensorflow is you could also continue training from the state so this means that at this point where we've gotten this models um performance year where we have 94 percent we could keep training from here so that we could get even to say 99 percent so you have to ensure that your saving is done properly now let's get into that but before getting to that one last point also note that with the first method here yeah, with this first method apart from this model configurations we also have uh, information like the metrics so the metrics you use like the accuracy uh the loss you use uh the optimizers so the optimizer information you use and all that so this kind of hyperparameter information has been saved here so next time all you need to do is just to load your model and then make use of it whereas here all you're saving is just the weights that said let's save our model in this case we have linnet model um uh, dot save actually linnet model dot save and we give it a name so we say linnet saved model for example that's it now we have this linnet saved model or uh, we run that cell and we check this out here so we check out these files and what do you see you have this linnet save model folder in this folder you have the assets which in this case is empty you have the variables which actually contains the weights so you could download this from here we could download this and then upload it next time so from here we see click on download that's fine we have the variables which contains the weights that's it and then we have this uh, saved model dot protobuf file here which actually contains our configuration we've had our configuration saved and our weights saved now let's uh load this so we've saved this and now we can now load it uh note that you could always download this so you could download the weights right here download this so let's click on download you could download all this and then next time all you need to do is just to load it now let's go ahead and load this the loading is quite simple here we will define a new model lunet loaded we have loaded model equals tf.keras.models dot load model there we go and now we specify this exact same name we have lunet saved model now what we do is we're going to um do lunet loaded model and then summary so that's it we're going to run that and we're getting this error here which is unusual um changing this name actually makes this work so lunet and then here so we have this lunet and let's run that again we save that and then we load this and we have our model right here so this means if you have to come back to this notebook all you need is to um load this model which has been saved right here in this lunet folder and so just like with this we'll replace this lunet model by lunet loaded model so let's load this let's use this loaded model and do some predictions there we go yes what we get u u u p p p p p p here we have an error u u u u and p p so it's kind of <coughs> similar to what we have with the original model from here we could also evaluate this model we have the net loaded model we evaluate that and let's see what we get recall previously we had 94.16 percent so now we expect to have something like around that value there we go we have exactly the same output as previously now we are going to look at how to load and save with the hdf5 format now this hdf5 format is a lightweight version of this tensorflow model saving method 
Yeah, there's uh, only this slight difference. All we need to do is to say uh, include this file extension. So we have your HD, HDF5, and then we save that. Now you check this out. You should have the HDF5 appearing. So here we have the Lunet HDF5, and then you could see its weight like 53 megabytes. Now let's load this model to load it. What we have here is the same code we had previously, and then here we specify HDF5. So there we go, we run that, and we have exactly the same summary. So that's it. Now we're yet to work with custom layers, but you have to note that in the case where you've built custom layers, then those configurations aren't stored when you're dealing with this HDF5 format. And so that's why uh, generally it's preferable for you to use this first formatting which we presented. That said, we're done with this first method where we save the configurations and the weights. Now let's look at this next method where we save only the weights. So uh, in this case, for example, where we're having this notebook, what we could do is simply just save the weights given that we already have the model's configuration defined in here. So let's get straight away into looking at the safe weights method, which comes with TensorFlow. So we'll take that off. And then right here, we have Lunet model, which we defined already. And then we save this weights as Lunet weight. So here we've saved this weights. Let's put it in the folder. So we have the weights folder. We run that again. So we could see clearly our weights. Um, click on that. And there we go. We have our weights. In this weights, we have the checkpointing, we have the weights. Now, notice how this weights here that's in these variables. If you click on these variables, okay. So, notice how there is some similarity between what we had here and this. Notice how this is the same as this, and then this index here is the same as this here. Recall we said that these variables contain the weights, and then we have the checkpoints. Uh, subsequently, we're going to look at checkpointing with TensorFlow. So for now, just know that this is how we save the weights. And then uh, upon defining your model, so you've defined your model, you can now load just these weights and not the whole model. But loading the weights, you're saying that you don't want the optimization or the optimizer configuration. You don't want the metrics and you don't want the loss configurations. So that said, let's look at how to load these weights. Now, here's all we need to load the weights. We have the Lynette model, the load weights, and then we load these weights. Let's do this so you see clearly that uh, this loading actually works. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to reinitialize our model. So we'll rerun this. So we rerun this. We'll compile our model. And then we run this evaluation right here. So we evaluate the model. And so you see that when the model's weights are randomly initialized, we have very poor results. So there we go. After random initialization, we have this. Now what we'll do is we'll take our Lunet model and then we load the weights. So we're gonna load the weights and then pass in our weights slash Lunet weights. That's fine. Let's run this again and then get our new model's performance. There we go. We see that our model now gets back to the 94.16% accuracy we had initially after doing the training. At this point, we've been able to load and save our model right here on Google Collab. But as we know, at the end of the session or after closing my notebook, all this information will be lost. So let's see how to save this information in Google Drive. We'll start by importing this drive. So we'll have from google.drive, from google.collab, we're gonna import the drive. Let's run that. And then the next thing we'll do is to mount this drive. So we have drive.mount, and then we specify the location. So we have your drive, and running that, you will be asked to put in an authorization code right here. To get this authorization code, it suffices to click on this right this link given to us here. So we we'll click on that link, and then once this pops up, we have this. You select your account, 
once you select that account you now go to connection so you've connected and then you copy your code so your code is copied now you put this in here and then you press enter once that's fine you see we have your mounted at content slash drive so mounted in this location you could see clearly from here and this tells us we are in this directory content and in this directory content we've created this other directory drive now we op click this open and then uh from this i can get access to my own google drive if now i want to copy this lunet folder into my google drive so that next time i could just load it from my google drive i'll make use of this cp command right here so what we'll have is um cp some option and then we have the source and the destination so here we are going to specify or we are going to use this um r so recursive so we're going to use this to copy directories recursively and that said we run the command we have this here and then we specify this folders directory here so we have content and then lunet so we copy in this lunet and then to what destination to my drive so we specify my drive we have my drive and then in here i have lunet i'll let you see lunet collab so that's it from here i'm gonna run this my drive and then i will search for lunet collab so that's what i have now i have this lunet collab right here and then our next step will be to copy from the my drive to the google collab such that um next time in case where we have not for example saved this year we'll be able to just quickly get that information from the drive onto the google collab also note that this is greatly used to with data sets so what we could have here is a data set in our collab and then we could transfer that data set to our drive and vice versa now let's do the same thing so here we are going to copy this back but this time around we're going to copy this into lunet collab so we're going to create a new folder here lunet collab and then take this information so this time around we're copying from our drive into lunet collab so that's it and then lunet collab we run that and uh, let's click on this click again and guess what we see we have our lunet collab right here Thank you very much for following up to this point and see you next time.